While the Photoshop Remove tool has gotten a lot of exposure on what it can take away, it can also add some too. You can actually use it for fill if you use it correctly. That's what I'm gonna be showing in this episode. Now, one of the things you should be aware of is that generative AI fill, the bigger picture of all this new fill-in things that aren't there in Photoshop in the beta, well, that really isn't for commercial use. But what I'm gonna to show today is allowed for commercial use because it's using existing tools that are in the production release of Photoshop, but also be aware that anytime that you are modifying pictures for a real estate photo, you really should make sure that it is okay with your client to do so. Now, this comes quite often as requests by the higher end stuff. When you're working with builders, designers, remodel companies where they're not representing necessarily the property, they're representing their services, they do want to have some things changed. Knowing how to do this then gives gives you the opportunity for making more money from add-ons by having these extra editing skills under your belt. So as long as you've been requested to do this, then no harm, no foul. And it actually is required in some cases for some of the work that you might try to get. So let's dive into this so that you can see how to use the remove tool correctly to do some fill instead of just removing objects. So the first example I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna start in Lightroom Classic. We're gonna be using some Photoshop for that remove tool, but the two examples here, we're going to take this dull looking picture here, which is missing a lot of grass. And sometimes that will wanna be filled in by the client. Once again, if you have the permission or request to do so, and we're going to take this then and turn it into this. The next example we're gonna take a look at after we step through that is this particular image. And you can see that I've tilted the camera up. It's also a little dull looking, but this is a tricky one because after we get this all done, it's gonna look like this, but that required some fill because we're gonna be losing some of the image in perspective. So let's start off with the first example so we can go through just the basics of this. And the second example will have some bonuses in it to show how to do that fake tilt shift and not lose any pixels along the way by being able to use this type of fill with the remove tool. So in here, what I've done is this is just a TIFF that was made from the raw file. If you have my course on professional exteriors, you know that this was then done using OEM software with then a color profile that I made myself to match better what I expected out of camera. This is an optional step, but one that I do recommend doing. And by the way, if you're not familiar with my course on professional exterior photography or any of the courses that I do have on real estate photography, I'll put links to those down in the description for the video so that you can check those out as well. But here, what I did was a few different things. One, I added a typical exterior preset and that already bumped it up increase the shadows, and then I just added a bit of a mask to the sky to really pump that up, and then a few final adjustments. So this is the image where it started was here, and then this is what I have. You can see we're still missing a lot of grass. So what we'd wanna do then is open this in Photoshop, and there's a lot of ways to do that, but you can right click on the image and then go edit in, and then edit in Photoshop, and then whatever version that you have, click on that. And that will then open up as another TIFF in Photoshop that you can then edit. So what we're gonna do here to see the difference, and it's always safe to do this anyways, is we're going to duplicate this layer by doing Control J. Now we've got a duplicate layer to work with. Now what I'm gonna do is zoom in here a little bit so that we can see what we're working with. And we'll work on this grass. Now, you might think that, well, if I use the remove tool here, I could remove the dirt patches. And what would it do? It would fill in then with its nearest neighbor. But what we wanna make sure is that by using the remove tool correctly, we allow Photoshop's AI to pick up what should be filled. Because along the edges of these dead areas are also water-starved grass, and we don't necessarily want that. So anyways, let's use the Remove tool, and that will be under this section of tools, and that's where you'd find the Healing Brush, the Remove tool is there, the Patch tool, Spot Healing, all those other ones, but we want the Remove tool. And once you do select the remove tool, make sure that you do not check the remove after each stroke. You want to make sure that that is unchecked and that will give you a lot more flexibility as you start selecting areas. Once we have that selected, you use a fairly good size, but the size you want is where it will start overlapping 
into the colored grass areas. So I'm gonna do that here. And you notice over here, I want to be able to overlap into the grass and maybe just a little bit into the bushes. So once again, we're gonna do that for these other areas. Remember the rule that I'm doing here is I don't want any dead areas and I wanna make sure that the overlap occurs into an area that AI can sample to do its fill. This is typically the same algorithm that would be used for doing a lot of the generative fill. And of course it's used in the remove tool to figure out, well, if I remove this, what would be in the background? So let's start with those areas there. We'll even get rid of some of this other deader grass, <laughs> deader, more dead grass, water starved grass in these areas. Once you have that then selected, you can either press the little check mark up here or press enter on your keyboard and then AI will do its thing. And when it's done, you can see that it filled in quite a bit. Let's zoom out here. It's not quite perfect, but if we take a look at the before and after by turning off the layers, this is what we had, this is what we filled. Then we can go in here, get a little bit closer, and then we can take the remove tool and the same way we can get these other areas that didn't quite get caught. So we'll do those real quick. We'll hit enter on the keyboard and then that gets filled in as well. So we can do that then to the other areas if we want to. I won't do it here to save you some time, but the finished image looked like this. Now, of course, we could have also removed things like a bit of the house was sticking out here. You could maybe crop that out, but this is all up to you. So anyways, that's the first example of what you would do to use the remove tool for fill, but it's more than that. This was just an example of grass. Let's take a look at that more problematic example so that we can also do a fake tilt shift and not lose any pixels. So this is where we started, and this is very typical where instead of using a tilt shift lens, if you can't see the top of a building, just tilt up. And you can see we've got a lot of room to work with with pixels. And we can apply then all the exterior adjustments. Here's what I did with after the preset and a few other simple adjustments, which were just up here. If you want to, you can pause and copy these. It's no big deal. But those are just your standard adjustments. Now, you are probably already familiar with doing a vertical adjustment, which we could here. And if I apply that vertical adjustment down in the transform panel, then I'm going to get these empty areas alongside because that was tilted up quite a bit. Now, you could always refine this however you want with changing if you needed a little bit of a different vertical adjustment or not, maybe it was a little bit too much, but we'll just go with what was automatically done by the automatic vertical adjustment. And now we have to fill in these areas. Now, one option is crop it. Well, if we cropped it down from the bottom to get rid of those areas, you can see it doesn't really look natural. Something looks off and that's because we cropped out so much at the bottom, we almost can't tell where this building is. So let's undo that and let's go back out here. Instead, we can easily fill this in using the remove tool. If though it is done correctly, which will be a little bit different than what I just showed with the grass example, but I think you'll really like the result. So let's once again, we'll right click on here and we'll say edit in. We'll edit in Photoshop 2023, a copy with Lightroom adjustments, which is very important. And we'll just say edit and it'll open it up in in Photoshop. So once again, we're in Photoshop and you can see here that we have now these dead areas. Those are transparent because that was what was clipped off of it. Now in the old days, we would use maybe some content aware fill to fill that in, but the remove tool has some really good AI behind it and it just keeps getting better. So let's use that. Let's zoom out just a little bit and we're going to duplicate this layer by doing control J. So now we can use the remove tool and use it in these areas, but you have to be careful on how much. In fact, it's better if we zoom in a little bit so we can get really close. What we wanna do using the remove tool is we want to have its outside edge just barely brush the outside of here. So I'd be going like this and you can see I'm only going a couple pixels out in this case. This is different from the grass example because we don't have so much dead grass. We only want a little bit of what would be closest by 
to then use for our fill. So we need to go down into here. And once we get that edge, then we can get a little sloppier on filling this in. And then you would hit enter or you do the check mark up here. So once that's all done, it did a fill. Now, is it the best? Not really. And we could probably touch that up even more. But if we go to before and after, we can see that it didn't do too bad of a job. We'll go over here and do this side as well. And once again, we wanna get that to where the tool is just overlapping just a little bit on the outside of this area. And by the way, if you're not familiar with this, hold your space bar down at any time. You get the hand tool so you can move this around. So we'll do that. We'll fill in this area then, and then we'll hit enter on our keyboard. And there it filled it in. Now there's obviously some AI things like fingers that don't look natural because we have all these extra water pipes, but we can edit those out. You can see that they weren't originally in the image below. So it said, well, I overlapped there. Maybe I should fill those in. So that's easy enough by using then the clone tool. If I use the clone stamp tool and I went up here, I could easily just clone some of that stuff in there so I can cover those up. That's no big deal. Now over here where I had this problem area, now it did a good job of filling in the tree, but it didn't quite get this. And some of this is a little off. And so that could also be cloned if you really wanted to. You could take some of this area here, for instance, and clone this so that that looks a little more natural. You could clone a porch over here. You could also clone a little bit of the tree just to extend maybe a little bit into there. Maybe look a little bit more natural by doing that. And either way though, this is what we have now. This is where we started. So definitely some better AI, and you can see it did a pretty good job on the bricks, not too bad, but it's just another alternative compared to trying to do a content aware fill, especially since the AI engine continues to improve with Photoshop. But let's say that we didn't like this at all. Let's say that AI completely failed. This is where I wanna show you the other traditional alternative. Let's shut this layer off and we'll just call this one AI. It was using the remove tool. But let's duplicate this layer down here. We'll do control J and this is the traditional way of doing it. What you would do is you'd zoom in here move this off to the side so we can see what we're doing. And you'd use an old tool that nobody talks about anymore. It's called the magic wand. Magic wand is really good for these transparent areas. You just click in here someplace and it's selected at all. And then you would just need to expand that selection. So you'd go to select and then you want to modify the selection by expanding it, say about five pixels, maybe 10 pixels. Once you do that, then you can go up to edit and you want to fill that and you want to make sure that the contents are content aware. When you select OK, it'll do the content aware fill. So we'll do control D to deselect that. Now, did that do a better job of our AI? Let's turn that on and off and let's see the difference. Here's what AI filled in. Here's what content aware filled in back and forth once again to see the difference. So here's content to wear the old fashioned way and here's AI. Let's do the other side where we had the bricks and see the comparison. So once again, I'll use the magic wand tool and select in this transparent area. Then I'll go select, modify, expand that by five pixels and then edit fill and we'll do a content aware fill. Once that's done, let's take a look. Control D to deselect that and let's see the difference. You can see that it started upping something up here with a little bit of the bricks. If we go off and on, maybe a little bit better. Now, don't forget, I did uh, clone in this, but still the content aware of fill picked up the valve on those pipes. So it did a better job on the bricks, I think, overall. And because you can see they're just raised over here, something wasn't quite right. So six in one hand, maybe half a dozen in the other, but AI overall really does a better job by using the remove tool. So remember that the remove tool doesn't have to be just for removing stuff. You can also use the remove tool for filling. So when you see some challenges that you need to fill in, try the remove tool and see how that works instead.